Life's too short to drive boring cars. So when we're talking about cars, luxury cars generally mean something that you like to have. Something above and beyond, not necessarily something you need to have, but with a few expendable dollars, it's a car that you might be able to buy. So clearly driving a luxury car isn't necessarily the most frugal expenditure, but at the end of the day, nobody wants a luxury car that's so unreliable and is so expensive to run that it costs you three legs and two and a half arms just to keep running on the road. I mean, ultimately that term is money pit, right? And while driving a BMW or a Land Rover, you're going to expect elevated running costs. However, it doesn't necessarily mean we need to get ripped off by assumption. And as the old wealthy barber once said, you don't get rich by spending money, you get rich by saving money. So if you're anything like me, I love driving luxury cars, but I also want to know that I'm getting maximum value. And I want to know that I feel like I'm not going to get ripped off. So guess what? I have a list of some of the worst culprits in the industry for gouging consumers and the highest running costs over a 10 year time frame. Now what I won't talk about are those exclusive Bentleys and Rolls Royce cars because they're relatively low production numbers, but we'll talk about everything more or less mainstream. And I hope the information I share gives you enough ammunition to make the right choice when you're out buying your next luxury car. Let's get into it now. So the first cheapest luxury car on my list to maintain over a 10 year time frame, and remember, comes with a caveat. Why? Because a Tesla is pure electric. And in a 10 year time frame, generally you're not replacing batteries yet. But after about 12 years, that's when it starts to get expensive, so the costs will start to elevate. However, for the first 10 years, if you're buying the car new, they're the lowest on our list right here. The Tesla's got a lot of airtime in recent years because of the styling, the innovation. They're one of the first to get to the table with Pure Electric. Right there, they've got some amazing headlights. I love the style and Tesla. They definitely have a great brand on the go. And certainly the stock prices are doing what they do. There you go, some great LED lights on the front and some interesting styling throughout. How about those weird wheels? And then they have great little there, and look at this cute little mirror. How about that wonderful pane of glass on top allows for a lot of light and illumination in the cabin. And they've got these great little tuck away flush mounted handles. Cycling around to the back, I love this ever flowing rear glass. There's no seam there, very clean. LED tail lights, compliments San Tesla. And there you go again with a dual motor. And they've got some great flair to them as well. These vehicles look very sharp and quite sporty. But what about the inside? Very controversial. Leather seats are nice. The fit and finish is always left a little be desired. And other than that big iPad screen, there's not much for a dashboard on these vehicles. So what would you expect a 10 year running service cost look like for your average Tesla? Well, it's about $5,800, making it a very affordable vehicle, averaging a mere $580 per year on average. And the second most expensive luxury vehicle to run is just a little bit pricier than your average Tesla, and we're talking about Lexus. Historically known for reliability, durability, long life, you can't go wrong with a Lexus, and the 10 year operating costs are quite low too, but let's take a look. Here we have one of the most beautiful Lexus vehicles currently in the market, and what is this? We're talking about the LC500 by Lexus. It's a sport coupe. This happens to be a convertible. You can also get a coupe. Beautiful cars. Beautiful wheels, wonderful vents and flares. Of course, a very muscular stance. This has a very aggressive looking profile to it. And those wonderful mirrors that you'll find on some of the upscale Lexus. This one's a convertible, ragtop, beautiful vehicle. Love those rear tail lights. That's definitely crisp. And you've got one as well as two exhaust tips on this beautiful unit. And as well, you can see the wonderful flares on the bottom and the rocker panels are very aggressive. How about the front? vents and those beautiful headlights and of course classically this grill by Lexus not everybody loves but the overall profile of the car is one that is definitely sure to excite so what is your average 10 year span of cost to run a Lexus well it's about $7,700 which averages only about $770 per year to keep these beautiful vehicles on the road now that's a blend between vehicles like this or you've got the RX models IS models and the like and the next one on our list is one of Lexus's biggest rivals, and it's Acura. And what we have right here is the RDX, very special vehicle. But the overall running costs of these are variable, depending on whether you're driving a car or an SUV, or even the infamous Acura NSX. But let's take a quick look. Gorgeous color scheme with some of these Acuras. Look at that oversized logo. Definitely tells all the lesser vehicles around who's boss. Love those headlights, very unique and the interesting style grill, similar as Lexus, not quite spindle though. And you've got some nice black polished trim there. 
beautiful wheels and we're looking at an a spec hence the interesting color look at the beautiful mirrors love that fine detail and lots of glass on top for all the passengers inside the cabin there you've got keyless entry and some flared hips that are very sharp and creased and notice more angles down here very intense looking design themes beautiful looking style all the way through and even the hood with this wonderful spoon shaped scoop on the hood looks very interesting and i have to say acura has really stepped up their game and the interior finishing of this vehicle is about as good as i've seen in recent years on any manufacturer love the contrast stitching well bolstered seats and nice touches of aluminum and polished trim. So again, as I say, not this specific vehicle, but Acura's in general average about $10,700 of cost for maintenance over a 10 year time frame. But realize we're not talking about unexpected breakdowns. Generally, Acura is quite reliable, so you're not going to have a ton of issues above and beyond that 10 grand. And the next one on our list is an upscale Nissan and it's the Infiniti like we see parked right behind me here, right here. Now, very large vehicle, V8 powered. Interesting headlights, projector style. They've got big aluminum wheels and stepping boards there for smaller people to be able to hop into the cabin there. These doors are as big as a barn door, huge. And looking at the back, it cuts off almost like a brick. But look at that overhang, how cute is that? And this bulbous looking tailgate assembly right here. And you've got these wonderful little LEDs at the back. Nothing fancy for exhaust other than that little tailpipe. And you can actually tow something with it if you configure it accordingly. This vehicle's ginormous and it's got a roof rack, which is almost too high because most people can't even reach that. Interesting little vents, almost looks like something from Pep Boys or Canadian Tire. And we've got a great little mirror. What about the chrome handles? And the average Infiniti costs a little bit more than Acura and Lexus, primarily because some of their smaller vehicles, SUVs, for example, a lot of them actually have the CVT, which is the continuously variable transmission, and that's a little more maintenance intensive, unfortunately. Sadly, some of the other unknowns drive the prices up a little bit on standard maintenance. And what do we have here? We have a glorified Ford, but we're talking about the Lincoln brand, and this specifically is the Nautilus. But I will say they've really dressed it up, looks a lot prettier than anything that Ford puts out. You see Lincoln, protruding little logo on there and that great little grill. Love these headlights, they've really dialed that up. And lots of chrome as you can see all along the way there. Beautiful laser cut wheels and it's the Nautilus. How about those great mirrors? Keyless door handles, front and back. Lots of glass on the roof for all the passengers to enjoy natural light illumination into the cabin. How about that hood? Pretty conventional, nice little ripple up the middle. And I like these little LED strips there as well. Some great detail, plastic along there to protect the body from rocks off the road, like you see here. That'll keep that from destroying the paint. I definitely will say the interior does not necessarily look like a Ford. They have certainly stepped up their game. And Ford Lincoln have gotten certainly a little better in recent years. Other than a few misfires along the way, reliability isn't necessarily the worst. But you could expect about $12,000 per 10 year time frame, or about $1,200 a year to keep one of these Lincolns on the road. And then next we start sliding into some of the German problems, or I mean pro products. For example, from VAG we have an Audi right here. This happens to be an A5. Now this one doesn't look particularly well kept, but let's take a look around. Beautiful LED headlights, Audi style. They've got a great front bumper, nice chin spoiler effect. Huge big mouth grille, what Audi is doing on a lot of their products, not too unlike Lexus these days. Beautiful alloy wheels, missing the center caps. We have an S line here. How about these tiny little mirrors? Feels very VAG for sure. Large sunroof on top. And then they have a great design, but still resembles strongly the Volkswagen line of products. Here we have LED taillights, TFSI Quattro. So some of the two liter TFSI engines have had problems with carbon fouling, coolant leaks, and even some timing change in certain years with these Audi products. Again, as I say, it's an A5, and generally it looks fairly stout. But look down here, look at the rusted out looking tailpipes. That tells me this car is either from Ontario, Quebec, possibly New York State somewhere. Very rough. I would hazard a guess if I looked underneath, I'd find a lot of rot. And they have a great little keyless touch there. And the interior is very, very well done. Audi definitely makes some of the best interiors in the business. 
And did you think all this goodness was going to come at a low cost? Well, let's try about $13,200 for an average over a 10-year span. So you're about $1,300 a year is what you would anticipate to keep this vehicle on the road. Again, that's a blend between the A3 series, four, five, six, RS7s. I mean, the average between the, the entire lineup gets blended in to make a roughly about $13,000 in costs in a 10-year time frame. And Cadillacs on our list next. What we have here is a beautiful little Escalade. Here, 13,500 is what you would expect for an ongoing 10 year time frame to keep these on the road. But the Escalades are beautiful. Wonderful headlights. Look at the front grill on that. And even the bigger grill here is very, very imposing. Telling people to get the heck out of the way, I'm coming through. Beautiful wheels. Escalade, there it is, and I love these mirrors. How about their soft touch? And look at the rest, you've got all that wonderful trim. Beautiful vehicle all the way through. Now they're very comfortable, very luxurious, but there are some potential issues with the engines that we're starting to see in some of the GM engines, and some of them may even transfer through to the Cadillacs. Either way, get through some of those engine lifter problems, these things will run forever. And the next one is one that's actually becoming a great contender, and it's Volvo. They're historically known for some of their best crash test results, and they're one of the safest vehicles on the road. But here we have it. Beautiful Volvos. Great little accent detailing in the front chin. You don't see a lot of that in a lot of other vehicles. Beautiful high gloss trim, and these wonderful LED headlights. Moving over to the front grill, that's classic Volvo. And then we look down the side and it looks very similar to many other SUVs on the market today. But it definitely finishes off with this nice little flare at the back. And I definitely love these tail lights that you're seeing on a lot of modern Volvos. Here we're looking at the T8R twin engine all wheel drive. This car is loaded. Now we have one set and two sets of tailpipes and we can haul some junk in the trunk. Look at this wonderful little trunk finishing there on this XC60. Beautiful little laser cut rims. And I love how they scooped out the doors. It gives it some nice contour there. Wonderful door handles, pretty standard fare. And the interior is almost as good as anything you'll find in the German arenas. But what are we looking at right there? Well, that's a plug-in port. Volvos are getting a little pricier to run. A lot of their engines now, they're having turbocharging and supercharging as well as electrification all tied into the same drivetrain. Lots of complexity, lots going on, and lots of maintenance and repairs. And you can expect about a $13,500 10-year average to keep a conventional modern-day Volvo on the road for basic maintenance. And then we have another one from the German brands, and we're talking about Mercedes. Now, Mercedes can vary so much. You can talk about from a CLA, GLA, all the way up to an S-Class, and a lot of the AMG models makes the span and cost quite significant. However, the average is almost $16,000 per 10-year time frame. In other words, about $1,600 a year. But here we have a great example. We're talking about a C-Class C43 AMG. Beautiful headlights. Love that grill with the star spangled banner. All those stars just sparkling at you. How about that great little front chin on there? And vents. Whoops, what happened there? But they have great aluminum wheels and a very large glass top that pops up and back. It doesn't actually blend in, of course, but I love these mirrors with that great LED strip. A little bit of chrome. And of course, because it's a coupe, it looks very sharp. It definitely has that long sloping back end on the C43 AMG model like we have here. Here we have a great little taillight setup, LED, very sharp in the dark. Vents, great little splitter on the bottom as well as a dual exhaust. What about the interior? Very sharp looking interior in the modern day Benzes as well. So as I was saying, for 16 grand, there's no way you can call a Mercedes Benz frugal. And next we have on our list one of my true favorites. And it's not a cheap one to run in a 10 year time frame. But because these cars are so incredible to drive, that's where the balance is. You find a car that's that good, it's actually worth spending the money on. And we're talking about Jaguar. And specifically we're looking at the F-Type R right here. Now this is the latest and greatest F-Type R. And you could tell because of the headlights are sleeker. Where some of the original F-Types had a longer headlight right there. But you have the wonderful red calipers, beautiful high gloss black wheels. Oh, I love the mirrors, they do fold in. And you've got a wonderful glass panel. You can either get painted glass or carbon fiber. You have a wing that pops up at 70 miles an hour and drops back down at 50. Beautiful quad tailpipes on this R. 
And I love this revised set of tail lights. Look at the flare on that and the haunch. This car means business. Ultra aggressive and looks like no other car on the street today. We've got the flush mounted handles that pop out at will. And of course, great little Jaguar symbol with more vents. Look at the aggressive front spoiler on this car as well. Beautiful kitty. 575 horsepower, supercharged 5 liter V8 tucked under that hood. Makes it an incredible experience. 8 speed automatic transmission by ZF. Snap, crackle, pop. There's very little out there like this. These cars are incredible. That's why I bought one. But it comes at a cost. You can expect to pay about $17,700 in a 10 year time frame. In other words, an average of almost $1,800 a year just to keep the car on the road. And the next one on our list is Big Daddy Warbox right here. And we're talking about the Land Rover brand. Right there, it's Land Rover. But specifically, we're talking Range Rover is where the big dollar sits. Here we've got beautiful headlights, wonderful textile grill, very classy and elegant. Look at these oversized wheels, and they are 21 inch in diameter. Look at these great vents, definitely unique for a Range Rover. Keyless entry, great little step out running boards, and a tail end that looks very much like a Ford Explorer, but that would be an insult to this brand. How about under there? Great little exhaust tip finishing. Beautiful rear tail lights on this HSE, and we're talking about the P525 by Range Rover, which again is a Land Rover product. Beautiful overhang, elegant design, and an absolute glamorous interior that only kings and queens are accustomed to. But all that goodness comes in at an annual cost of about $1,900, or of a 10 year time span, $18,900. But let's not forget, this is actually going to be a little more because then you also have the Range Rover Sport as well as the Plain Jane Discoveries. So again, as the old adage says, if you wanna play, you gotta pay. Well, the next one is by this great little brand. What do we call that? BMW. They're great, right? The ultimate driving machine, right? Performance-based, right? Sure. But they don't come without their issues. I mean, we've got the older N20 engines that have eat up timing chains for lunch. We have the newer N63s that eat up timing chains for lunch and, and drink oil faster than a wino going through a liquor store. Coolant leaks, oil leaks, you name it. BMW's got it covered. And that's why maintenance costs are high. Beautiful headlights, big mouth grill, wonderful front and chin on there, alloy wheels, and look, vents. Great mirrors, and I love those two-tone handles sunroof small by nature but of course we've got led tail lights on the 750 x drive all wheel drive wonderful little tailpipes but you'll notice lots of carbon because these things are direct injected beautiful interiors as well but bmw's all that goodness comes at a cost because when you're dealing with powerful twin turbo v8 engines or you're dealing with multiple leaks or cars that are ultra sensitive to the type of oil you use and the maintenance regimes that are directly tied to the bmw business model means that you're going to pay a lot of money for example you can't expect to pay about nineteen thousand three hundred dollars on average with all the models blended across the lineup they're not cheap they're the second most expensive mainstream luxury car to run and what we have here is truly one of my favorites, and it happens to be the most expensive luxury vehicle on the market. We're looking at Porsche, and specifically, here's a 911. The 911 has such a racing heritage. Beautiful cars. Look at those wonderful headlights, and that front spoiler is absolutely to die for. Love that little trim light on there. There you go, Porsche. And there's the infamous crest that you get with that. Look at the beautiful flares on this car. How about go down the side? Oh, beautiful wheels. And we've got the Porsche calipers. Beautiful car. Love the mirrors. Beautiful high gloss sunroof. A revised door handle in Porsche these days. And of course, as we cycle around to the back, I love the rear finishing of the modern day 911s. Here we have a 4S, means it's all wheel drive and it's the S model, so it's steeped up. Beautiful. Integrated one and two right there. Tiny little cute bumperettes right there and a little ventilation. These cars are absolutely gorgeous in every sense of the word. Porsche 911, you can definitely not go wrong there. Interiors are some of the highest quality you will literally find anywhere. But Porsches make SUVs as well, like this. We have a Cayenne right here. These are beautiful. Some of the sportiest SUVs you'll find anywhere. Gorgeous, trying to follow a lot of the same lines and themes that you're finding in a 911, but there's no doubt about it. These vehicles are made for off-road. 
So how much does all this goodness come? Well, I can tell you it comes at an average cost of about $22,000 in a 10 year time frame. That's just maintenance. We won't even talk about breakdowns or repairs. The average Porsche is a very, very expensive vehicle to run and it's borderline exotic car territory. And with all of that said, be sure to click right there, the most reliable luxury cars on the planet. Hope to see you real soon. Catch you then. Bye-bye.